Within this video, I want to explore the ideas of flexibility, and I kind of chose these two images. Both of them appeared in a Creative Commons Google search, and I was kind of impressed by sort of both of them. And I think both of them, in some ways, represent exactly what we're going to talk about here. First of all, the one over here, which shows kind of like the sporting training way of achieving really impressive flexibility that many athletes who are gymnasts and martial artists and so on have to go through and enjoy to actually get to kind of the limits of their performance. And you see here, you've got a young child, I don't know how old this boy or this girl is, has been, the, the back is being stretched and, and literally the kind of the, the discs in the back are being sort of closed together in, uh, in this sort of way, right? And they're kind of being shoved together in this way to make this performer be able to actually produce that kind of stretch. And then you've got this other um, example over here where you've got this athlete, presumably again a martial artist of some kind, this athlete who is going through some real hyper-flexibility exercises, hyper-flexibility exercises, presumably able to do that because she's undergone an awful lot of flexibility in her, in, in her training. So let's first of all describe and define what we mean by flexibility. Flexibility is quite simply the range of movement or the range of motion, the range of motion at a joint, okay? So we see the, the extent of the flexibility in this case of this performer's uh, hip joints uh, and her ankles for that, for that matter. And then in this case, the flexibility of this young man, I think it's a boy anyway, of this young man's spine. So we've got this range of motion at a particular joint. And then really, we kind of want to understand immediately that we've got kind of two base forms of flexibility. Some people argue there's more, but we're going to suggest that there's kind of basically two forms of flexibility. The first one is what we describe as dynamic flexibility. And I think in many ways, this is the type of flexibility which is most relevant in a lot of sporting performances. It depends really whether you're in a balanced position or in an accelerating or decelerating position, but certainly dynamic, dynamic flexibility is pivotal and central to many sporting performances. And the reason it is so is because it takes into, a, into account speed. So it's sort of like range of motion with speed. So imagine a performer who is stretching a joint to its fullest range of motion while in movement. When I say that, I think of sort of like a goalkeeper in a range of sports trying to make a save, a hockey or a football or, an, or even a netball goalkeeper trying to reach their shoulder and cling on to a rebound, for example. We get the idea that flexibility isn't just a static position where we hold the joint in a particular set format and then we kind of stretch the muscles around it. No, it's often taken there because the joint itself is going through a fuller range of movement and we call that concept dynamic flexibility. And I just want to give one further description of dynamic flexibility and that is it's a joint resistance to movement. A joint's